Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a manual install of OpenStack. And this is going to be a video in multiple parts that I'm going to publish later on. And I will link to the playlist down below and also to the script I'm using today. And now we have installed glance so we can have images that we can run later on create volumes of them and run in our environment so next up we want to see something i think that is an important step so let's install the dashboard and it's done by running the open uh, stack dashboard in a apache install so we will install it and use apache as our web server in order to run it and uh, it will ask for the host name here. So let's say that any host can uh, access it. We want to activate the dashboard as a virtual host. Uh, so the default one should be that. We don't want to use HTTPS. And then it will install the dashboard. There might be a couple of warnings or so when you install this, but this is Pretty much because it's an Angular application and there might be packages that are newer and so on or things that have been deprecated. But as the uh, software matures, so does also this dashboard. So if you install the latest version, you should not have these problems. Now that we have installed that package, we need to configure it a bit to so go into local settings. So the file is called uh, dash, uh, OpenStack Dashboard Local Settings.py. So it's a Python application. And in here we will search for um, OpenStack host. The OpenStack host is localhost at the moment. So if you're running this locally, that should be fine. But we want to be able to access it outside of the host. So we will add the IP instead. And this Identity here was not the identity keystone URL that we set up. We set up just v3 and that's the by the uh, Documentation that's what you, you should do and at the bottom here I want to add some extra things. So I want to add this in so allowed host We have already specified that so there is a setting for that late uh, above then we want a session engine. It should be the cache, the new cache. And this backend here is the memory cache. So that's what we want to use for this session engine. Uh, location, uh, 112 here, 11. And then we have the OpenStack versions. Should be version three for the identity. Image version two, volume version three. So that's by the documentation as well. This keystone default domain and role, if we don't specify user and default, then the login will not work correctly. And if we don't specify the domain, it will ask for the domain every time we log in. And as we only have one domain, then we can set the default here and then we don't get that question. Uh, then the neutral network, I disable a bunch of feature here that don't need the router, quotas and distributed router and so on. But that those are very useful in some installations. So, of course, you can keep them. So save that file there. Then I want to go into the uh, OpenStack dashboard com for available sites in Apache. So this was what was added as a default local host. And in here we want to add another of these VSGI uh, uh, things. Application group should be global. This is something that they mention in the documentation, but it's not something that is there. I, don't, I haven't seen that there is any difference if I add it or not, but as the documentation says it should be there, I will add it. And then I will reload this service. And if we go over to my web, um, my web browser here and reload, then we should get a login prompt for our OpenStack dashboard. And if we type admin QWERTY, we should, should be able to log in. Sadly, at this point, there isn't that much else installed in this system. So we will not see that much in the dashboard. We could look at the images. We could look at users and so on so we have users project and roles here so if we go into user and we have a problem here with this uh, OpenStack dashboard it's 
has something to do with all of these policies that are installed. So you are losing connections and then you are thrown out uh, if the policies aren't correct. And then we have uh, the admin here, system information. You can look at that. And we can see some quotas for the images and so on. So there is some information to be seen, but as we add more features into this, we can see even more information. So here we can see the glance and keystone APIs here on the system information. So now we have a dashboard. Next up, we need some way to handle our volumes. So things that could be running in our system or extra drives that we want. And this volume handler could also do backups and snapshots and handle everything about volumes. And the application for that is called Cinder. So first off, we will install the database or set up the database. So we go into MySQL and we add the Cinder database and give the, the user Cinder full uh, rights to that. And then we will create the user in OpenStack for Cinder. So there's create user, domain default, password prompt, Cinder. Oh, not a uh, comma after that. And that will create our user and we can give it the uh, password. All these passwords can be different, of course. And then we have OpenStack role add project service user Cinder will have the admin role for that project. And then we will create the service, create name Cinder v3, description OpenStack block service storage, and then volume three. And the reason we are using v3 version 3 is because there could be version 2 and version 3 living in the cluster at the same time it is supported and before this version both of them were required to be installed but at the moment only version 3 is installed perhaps a version 4 will be installed later on if you do a migration step and so on so therefore it has a specific name so we give that and then we will set up all of these uh, endpoints here for region 1, volume 3, a public, internal and admin endpoint. And the endpoint uh, has this v3 project IDs in the end, so it will be specific for, be specific for a specific project. And then we, it's 8776 that we are using as a port. So this will set up those endpoints for us. And when the endpoints are done, we will install the applications. And in this case, we have this Cinder API application. We have the Cinder scheduler, handling schedulers. Uh, Cinder volume is the workhorse of the Cinder system. So when there is any job to do, set up new volumes, migrate volumes, or back uh, doing snapshots and so on, that is this tooling that we have a cinder backup that will do backups of volumes so let's install that and here it asks for setting up database we will skip that step rabbitmq is something that i usually set up and we will just give it the ip and then the user openstack we will input the password no auth token is not something we want to install the cinder volume group i could actually just say cinder volumes and this is used for LVM and we will change this later on to not use LVM so it's not terribly important my IP is this, this specific service IP so 78 again we don't set up any endpoints because we have already added those and then it will install the application uh, when the application is installed we can do a configuration go into the configuration file look for the connection uh, part here and this is the database connection it isn't specified at the moment so we will add a connection here so this is to the mysql database the cinder um, user and password and then the cinder um, database and then we will go and check a bunch of things here so they are set correctly. First off, we will look for transport URL and this is our RabbitMQ setup. So let's see if that is set up correctly. Here we have that. 
and it is RabbitMQ with the correct password and IP. Then we want to check my IP, of course. We added that in our setup, but we want to verify that it's correct. And then we will go on to enabled backends. And there we should see LVM at the moment, but that is not what we want to run. We want to run Ceph instead. So we will change this to Ceph. And then I want to add, I, you can add it pretty much anywhere, but I will add it in the default section up here. I will add the backup driver here. So we have the backup driver, which is Cinder backup drivers, Ceph, then Ceph backup driver. The documentation actually just mentioned the first part here, but I added the last part because I've seen other drivers that have similar uh, setup here and looked similar. And then when I searched for it online, there were some people complaining that the documentation was wrong and this is the correct driver. So yeah, d good on me <laughs> or something. And then we set up the Cephconf and then the Ceph user is in the backup. Chunk size is pretty large, but then again we have this flag down here, restore, discard, excess bytes. So when we restore, we'll remove the bytes that are extra. So you could have a smaller chunk size here if you don't want your backups to take up so much space. But it's uh, better to have a larger value here because of performance. It's faster to do backups if you have larger chunks. And then we don't do any striping or and the stripe count or unit. So uh, let's write that. And then I want to look for the keystone token. All of these applications will need to have an auth token. So we go down here. And again, I will re uh, remove all of this and substitute it with my own. Um, so when we have removed all this documentation here and then put in these lines. So there's this auth URL, the memcache server, auth type password, default name of domain and project name, and then Cinder and QWERTY. So similar to the other setups. And then in the bottom of this file, I want to add extra section here. See, I want to add the Ceph section. So. This is my Ceph configuration. It's not specified in the file already. So the volume driver should be Cinder volume drivers, RBD, RBD driver. The volume backend name is Ceph. The RBD pool is volumes. Ceph configuration is the configuration file. Flatten volume on snapshot. So you set that full. Uh, RBD max clone death five, store chunk size four. Radars connect timeout, no timeout. That is an interesting one. An RBD user is Cinder, and then a secret URL, a URI is UUID, is something that I generated myself. I created this UUID, and that will be reused on um, multiple different places, so it can actually find this secret UUID in my compute unit later on. So this is specified here and then reused uh, on other places so as a lookup. Um, so we can save that and quit. All of the document, all the things I did for Ceph here is of course mentioned in this uh, block devices for OpenStack documentation on the Ceph uh, homepage. So you can look it up there um, if you want more information. And after that, I will sync up the Cinder database. So we run Cinder manage DB sync with the user Cinder. And it will run through and do all the migration steps that are required for the database. We need some keys for the Ceph uh, environment. So we will put in Ceph client Cinder key ring. And then we will put in a key here for the client Cinder. And I will give access to Cinder Cinder for that key. And the key is actually fetched by these commands here. I mentioned it in the glance part of this video. So the glance part, the glance uh, you get by running the first of these lines and then you can get the Cinder and Cinder backup by running the other two. So those will set up the specific user with all the right permissions and then 
you get a key for it. So of course we want to set up the backup key as well. So um, see here. Wow. Uh, don't copy twice. Can you please copy once? So this is the Cinder backup keyring, and then we will copy that keyring in here and save that and give that keyring access right to it. so the cinder cinder uh, cinder user and cinder group on the system can read that keyring and then i will restart all the services in the cinder uh, system so restart cinder api restart cinder backup restart cinder volume restart cinder scheduler and the apache 2 so by restarting all these services, I know then that they have the correct configuration. I will also enable all these services. So they will start on reboot. So run through this. And then if we ever have to restart this service server, then they will be started as well. This was what I wanted to show for you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have an OpenStack, uh, implementation running already leave a comment in the comment section down below and especially if there is a specific service that you feel is more complicated and something that you can't really wrap your head around and you want me to dig deeper into that service then leave a comment about that in the comment section as well if you haven't subscribed yet please do that if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues and I really hope to see you in the next video.